Hi, my name is Hank. I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm here checking out the studio. They got a lot of great stuff going on, and you should definitely become a premium subscriber to check out all the great content. This week on Mic'd Up, is Fox News turning gay, and what is the Pope talking about? Those are our topics this Wednesday, September 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Click the link to check out the show page. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Lots and lots of cowardly clerics are most delighted at the Pope's interview because they feel, and are even saying in so many words, that they are now off the hook. They're no longer responsible to teach the church's doctrines because, you all you know, that wouldn't be pastoral. For years, they've kept their mouth shut about the hot-button issues of sexual morality. Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York even admitted that to the Wall Street Journal last year, as if anyone needed his guilty admission to know the truth of the matter. Unlike Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict, who many of them just ignored when it came to stressing the importance of defeating these evils, now they finally have a pope who they can interpret to mean, Whew, sure glad we don't have to talk about those things anymore, as if they had ever in reality lifted one blessed finger to preach against these evils ever in the first place. And to the precise point, exactly when and where was this obsession on the part of church leaders and her clergy on preaching about, for example, contraception, so that many church leaders went all rushing to the barricades now to forswear, to pledge, to tone down their incessant preaching about all of this because there is suddenly a new tone. What's new about it? How is being silent for the past 40 years going to be any different from being silent moving forward from here. Silence is pretty silent and sounds pretty much like any other silence. Please, the mainstream media is the institution that informed the world of the church's teachings about sexual morality in an obsessed fashion, nonstop, 24 hours a day, every 24-hour news cycle you can imagine. Most clergy, including bishops, were already ignoring the sins that send more souls to hell than any other, so warns the Queen of Heaven at Fatima. Or they were busy in confession outright denying that any of these acts are actually sinful. You will have to hunt from here to eternity on the U.S. Bishop's website for statements condemning contraception, for example, which threatens an everlasting damnation of the person, and you will have to hunt under mountains of press releases stressing immigration reform and welfare policy, which have no intrinsic power to damn a soul. John the Baptist had no such tone that some bishops and others are ascribing to Pope Francis. Our blessed Lord himself had no such tone. St. Peter had no such tone. It's not even clear that St. Paul would have understood what the word tone even meant. The application of new tone hasn't worked for the past 50 plus years. The churches are emptying out and closing, and yet some church leaders are positively giddy about now being able to stop talking about the sins that send souls to hell and start speaking with a new tone. Again, how will the new tone be anything different from the old and current tone? When Jane Fonda and Chris Rock are cheering on you and your new tone, you better check your new tone. They aren't cheering you on because they have suddenly had a Damascus moment and are agreeing with you. They are cheering you on because they hope or actually think that you now agree with them or at the very least can now be persuaded to come over to their side. Why else does anyone think that they're all tripping all over each other to release press releases and statements praising the Pope? Funny didn't see one statement or press release from them the next day when the Pope roundly and solidly condemned abortion in the strongest tone and words he has used since his election. Same question. Why else would the pro-abortion group NARAL almost immediately create and post a meme on their Facebook page saying, thank you, Pope Francis, from pro-choice women everywhere. They aren't saying thank you for showing us the light so that we can now convert to the truth. They aren't saying thank you for bringing us to the realization of the Paschal mystery and our path to salvation. They aren't saying thank you for bringing to them the light of revelation and the glorious mysteries of the Catholic Church. They are saying thank you for giving them the moral license, the public relations license, to now fire back at pro-lifers and faithful Catholics who have spent decades in front of the abortion chambers praying for the killing to end. 
The issue is always about saving souls. Every action done, every word uttered, must be measured against this standard and this standard alone. Will this, all of this, encourage Jane Fonda to repent and become an authentic Catholic? Will she hang up her weapons of mass contraception and renounce a lifetime strategy of global population reduction through abortion and contraception? Just what part of the good news has she suddenly embraced? So much so, so that she is praising the Vicar of Christ on earth. Same types of questions for Chris Rock and all the other cultural elitists who have lived against and even actively fought against the truth with every fiber of their beings for most of their lives. These statements about loving the Pope and the Pope is great aren't born out of any conversion and desire to repent. They are born out of the smell of blood in the water. They are moving in for the kill, they think. But at the end of the day, the church is Christ's, not the Pope's, not the bishops or any other cowardly clerics, not even the laity. She is his bride, and he will not suffer forever her mourning in the marketplace and the desecration of her altars and confessionals. He is allowing this scourge of contradiction and humiliation, of being mocked and laughed to scorn by her enemies, to bring about salvation for some souls somewhere at some time. In the meantime, amidst all the verbal and emotional stoning going on, stand fast. While the faith is full of mystery, it is also quite simple. Loving God means more than just feeling a certain way. He himself has told us what it means. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. God love you. I'm Michael Vorse.